Hi, I'm Hank. Today I'm going to go over scripted items. Let's get right into it. So these are all of the hooks available on scripted items. It's a lot less than on other objects, right? These four are the ones that I mainly use. I'll spend some time going over a lot of the scripted item specific methods. And then from there, I'll just make a whole bunch of examples and then we'll call it good. So the first thing you want to do with your scripted item is you want to give it a name besides scripted item. So t to item. And then we'll name this cool item. There we go. Now it's named cool item. If you want to change the color or like the text font things, you can go get the uh, color codes here. Let's just do let's just do blue. Okay, so we change this, use the symbol and then the color formatting code. Now the name is blue. It's a cool item. All right. Now the next thing we want is we want to set a texture. And then which texture we'll go with? We'll go with just an ingot. Iron ingot. Okay. So what this first number is, is the item damage. How item damages work is there's all these different types of stone, right? They're all ID1, so stone ID1, granite ID1, all these are ID1, but these are different damage values. I don't know why they're called damage values. That's just how it is. I think it's a terrible name because damage implies like the durability of the item. Damage and durability are completely separate things. So in order to get this texture to match the item, we need this item's damage to be 10. So we'll do item set item damage. There we go. Now it looks like an ingot. What you can also do is you can change the color of the item. So we'll do a color. Then the number you put in here, this is in hexadecimal integer. And, uh, I have a website here, um, mathisfun.com. They have a hexadecimal integer converter. So we can just get whatever color we want and then copy the hexadecimal integer. And then there we go. Now it should be purplish ingot. Yep, there we go. Purple ingot. Cool. We can do the same thing with the durability bar color. Okay, same thing with the durability color. Let's get a, let's just set one, it'll be black, right? Let's get it a cool color. Let's get it, uh, so yellow. I have a yellow durability bar. And there we go. We can also set the stack size. Let's do, let's do eight for this item. So if we try and get more than 64 for this item, we can't. We're just left with eight. All right, so the durability as well. We set the color of the durability bar. Let's set the actual durability. The way item durability works is it is on a percentage-based system. So one is going to be a full bar, the bar is full, and then zero here, this is going to be an empty bar, the bar is empty. So if you want it to be half, it can be 0 0.5, and so on. So whenever you're doing calculations for how much durability your item has left, you're going to need to do it in percentages. Okay, I think that's all the super basic stuff. So I'm going to take these things and I'm going to make a couple example items off of these. So let's just get this. Let's copy this. Okay, let's make a little item. You can use it and then it will launch you into the air. Let's call this thing, let's call it jump feather. Okay, then let's change the texture to a feather. I didn't go over this in the initial item, but this texture and the damage values, these are global throughout your whole game world. So every single scripted item you have is going to need a different damage value for its texture. This is a 1.12 thing and 1.16, you only need to do set texture like this. It's a lot simpler, it's a lot easier, but for 1.12.2, you're going to need to have each item's texture have a different damage value. So let's just make this uh, like a single special item, set the max stack size to one. So it should give us a feather with a colored name that can't be stacked multiple times. There we go, feather, color name, can't stack it. So because it's a unique item, let's also just get rid of the durability bar. So set durability show, show, and we'll make this false. I think that's the right method. Yep, that's the right method. Now we just have a jump feather. Let's change its color a little bit. What color do we want this to be? 
We'll do make it like a green feather. It's kind of cool. Make a green feather. Uh, there we go. Green feather. Boom. There we go. Okay, so we have our feather set up looking the way we want it to. So our init function here, this is done. Now let's make it do something when we right click it. So when we right click our little feather, we want it to launch us up in the air. So that's easy. Player set motion Y. Now we right click the feather, we get launched up. Now there is a little bit of an issue with this. If we just spam it, we're just we're launching all over the place, right? And we don't really want that. So we want to give this a cooldown. Now you may have noticed this earlier, but scripted items do not have access to timers. That makes things very tricky when you're trying to set up cooldowns. What you could do is you could use the tick function and just set up something so it counts. So it's like just plus plus a variable every time the tick loops. But that's really bad on performance. So what we're going to do instead for cooldowns is we're going to use the player timers instead. What we're going to do is we're going to use a player timer as the cooldown, but we don't even need to interact with player scripts because we just need to check if the timer exists. So let's put that check right here. So I'm using 200 for my timer check. This is arbitrary. You can use any timer you want. Just make sure it's not doing anything in player scripts that's going to screw up any other player scripts you might have. We have it so it'll only do this if we do have the timer. We want it so it'll only happen if we don't have the timer. We're still clicking it. We can still spam it. That's because we're never starting the timer. So what we do is we start the timer here. That way, if we don't have the timer, we start the timer. We do the thing. If we try and do it again, we have the timer, and we have to wait till the timer goes away. So now this 50 here, this is the ticks. That's going to be our cooldown, essentially. If we wanted to, we could just make this a variable up here. Okay, and then we just copy this down here. Okay, we got an error. I missed an S. Okay, now I'm spamming it, and it's not launching me up all the time. I have to wait until the timer finishes. If we want, we could actually add a message here as well that tells us it's on cooldown. So else, player message. If it's on cooldown, it's going to message us that it's on cooldown. If it's on cooldown. And then if we want just to make make sure things are nice and visual, we could message us that we jumped. Put a little whoosh. So whoosh, cooldown, I'm spamming it still. Then whoosh, and then back on cooldown. So that's our little jump feather item. Now let's make a consumable type item. Now what do we want to have our consumable do? Let's have it give us a potion effect when we right click it. So we're going to use the interact function again. Let's set up a name and texture. So our name speedy seeds. So we're going to make these little seeds. When you eat them, they make you fast. So we're going to use the speed potion effect. Let's set up a texture real quick. Using 12 here because we used 11 on the previous scripted item. And the scripted items can't have the same texture. Otherwise, they'll overlap each other. There we go, speedy seeds. Now let's change the durability to not show and let's give it a stack size so it can act like a consumable item here. Let's do max stack size of 16. So if we try and pick block this, we're only gonna get 16 of them. That's fine, because that's what we want. Now the interact function, here's where we add our effects. So let's just make it easy. Player add potion effect. We'll do one, we'll do speed for three seconds, and we'll do effect level two. Okay, so we right click them, then we get some speed effect. Now we used our consumable item, but we still have 16 of it, so that's a problem. We need to manually have the stack size decrease. So the way we can do that is using set stack size and get stack size. We use get stack size to get the current stack size, and then we just subtract one from it and then use set. So this gets how many items it currently has. Now we just set it to be one less of that. Current size minus one. So whenever we interact with it, we should lose one of this. There we go. We got our speed effect but we lost one. And then it just goes down, and goes down, and goes down until they run out. If this reaches zero, just picking this so we don't lose the item. 
So I just spam these and they go all the way down to zero. Alright, we have our last one. Use it. And now they're gone. So consumable item. There we go. Next thing, let's make a refillable item of sorts. Let's, let's showcase the durability bar in action. So again, we're going to use the interact function. That's fine. So let's set up a name and a texture real quick. Okay, we'll name it Super Golden Apple. We should give it the Golden Apple texture. Makes sense. Okay, now I have to remember to actually set the item damage so it'll match the texture. So we should have our super golden apple with the golden apple texture. Let's give the durability bar a color. Oh, I typed an E there, my bad. So let's give it, let's give it a purple, give it a purple damage bar. There we go. Well, that's cool. This is our hex integer color here, so it should give us a purple damage bar color. And let's make it so that this item doesn't stack, it's just one item. There we go, it's just one item, so can't can't stack it if you pick block it. Cool. Now let's set up the healing when we right click it. Player, set health. We'll have it heal us two and a half hearts here. We need to damage ourselves for a test this, so let's just get it built real quick. Okay, uh, interact. Okay, so when we right click the golden apple here, as you can see, gave us health back. What if we want this to have limited uses though? What if we want it so that whenever we right click it, the durability bar goes down a bit? So as you can see, I can use it as many times as I want and the durability of the apple never goes down. So with this, we have to use set durability value. And then remember, these are percentage based, so they can only be between zero and one. We can do get durability value minus 0 0.2. So 0 0.2, that's gonna give it five different uses, right? Before it reaches zero. So take damage here, one, two. See, it went down a little bit here. Yep, see, I'm using it, the item goes down. Now, this here is just gonna keep making it go lower and lower and lower. Nothing is gonna happen when it reaches zero, right? Like, I can keep using this. That durability bar is gone, right? So we wanna make it not heal us if the durability value is too low. So there, we only want to do the healing if it has more than 1% durability. Let's move this losing durability in here as well. We've lost all of our durability, so we need to set it back to one. We'll do that here and in it. So it'll in it, back to one. Damage ourselves. We're using the item. Use it twice, use it three times, use it four times. Use it five times, will it heal us again? No, it won't, because we're out of durability. So we let the item in it again. There we go, back to full durability. What if we want to have a specific way to replenish the durability on this scripted item? Say we wanted it to get all its durability back whenever we right-click Glowstone, for example. Well, we can also do that in the interact function here. However, we need to be careful as there is no block field in the interact event. All right, let's pull up the API real quick. Okay, let's go to the item interact event. The item interact event. So the fields of the item interact event, we have a target which can be an object, just any object. The target can be any object, right? And so there's the type field here. The type field will be either air, so if we're right-clicking the air, an entity, if we're right-clicking an entity, or a block, if we're right-clicking a block. So if the type is two, that means the target field is gonna be a block. If type is two, that means we've right-clicked the block. That means t.target will represent the block. Target, get name. Okay, so this means if we right click Glowstone, this should run. So let's just set up a player message here. Okay, so 
So if we right click glowstone, it says you right click glowstone. And let's put a return here for now, because we don't want the durability to change right now. So let's just go walk through some glowstone. There we go, you right click glowstone. And if we don't right click glowstone, nothing else happens. So what this means is we can set the durability to refill whenever we right click on glowstone. Item, item will be used, otherwise, actually let's set a return here so that we don't like, so we don't take a bite out of the apple whenever we click on glowstone. So, item has limited uses, so you can see the durability bar getting lower there. Okay, we're out of durability now, we can't heal anymore, but if we go over to glowstone, if we right click it, the durability of the item gets restored, and I can start eating the apple again. So that is a refillable scripted item. So the last thing we're going to make is we're going to make a scripted weapon. Okay, just like the others, let's set up a name and texture for this scripted item. Okay, so now it should give us a simple sword. It looks like a stone sword. Nice. Now, when you're setting up an item to act like a sword, the most important thing to make it feel like other weapons is that, that swing cooldown there, right? See how there's the attack cooldown? There's the attack cooldown and there's the damage, right? If we hit pull up here, it does seven damage, but if we use a simple sword here, it just does one. It's just a normal item. So we need to change those attributes about it so it can have that attack speed and that attack damage. We can do that using attributes. So what this is going to do is it's going to set the attack damage attribute of the sword to be 10 when it's in the main hand. That's what the zero means here. If you want to look up these different fields for this, um, check the API. So we go hover over it, plus 10 attack damage when main hand. Go over to Billups here. Billups, Billups hurt pretty bad, but we still don't have a cooldown. There's another attribute we can use to adjust the cooldown, uh, which is attack speed. If we want the attack speed to be lower than a regular non-scripted item, this needs to be negative, so negative 2. As we can see, the swing swings like a normal sword, you can see by the attack indicator there. Now let's add an effect when you actually damage an entity. So if we pull up the API, the attack event, similar to the uh, interact event, or the attack event here, there is a type and a target. So the target can be any type of object um, determined by the type. So we have air, type, air, so no object, entities, things like players, NPCs, and blocks, which would be the block object. So if the type of the attack event is 1, that means we hit an entity. So we want this to only trigger if we hit an entity. So if type is 1. So what do we want to do when hitting the entity? Let's spawn some particles on the entity. Let's just do something simple. Now remember here we use t.target event.target because there isn't an NPC involved in this event. There's no NPC field. There's no there's no entity field. It's the target field, which can be null, it can be an entity, it can be a block. But if the type is one, then we know that the target object is an entity. So if we use this here, there we go. We get our flames when hitting up there. So I think that's all I wanted to go over. Uh, we made scripted item that's a consumable, we made a scripted item that just shows off different things, we made a scripted item that has a durability bar and is refillable, we made a scripted item that has a player timer based cooldown, and we made a simple weapon. So that's all I wanted to go over. If you have any other questions, feel free to join the Discord and you can ask them there. Okay, bye-bye.